First of all, thanks to my follower Enzo Robilate, who contributed to the channel, managing to get a use of information he has always been looking for. Thank you very much, Enzo. And now, today's episode. Reaper is a platform that, knowing how to use it, allows you to speed up any type of workflow by simplifying operations that uh, will otherwise not be only tedious, but also prone to errors. As always, this tutorial is aimed at those who work with Reaper and therefore to who needs to optimize every single operation in his studio, in which he is not limited to just the mix, but also project management for a good level of project management, especially for those who is also label. With just one click, you will be able to open any project without actually opening it. By reading the data contained, which plugins you have used, tracks and their names, notes, comments, settings, metadata, in short, any useful data for management purposes. Here I have a complete project related to a record production of some time ago. As you can see, it has its own well-defined hierarchical structure. Tracks, buses, folders, and so on. Some folders and items contain notes. The project itself contains nodes, in addition to the metadata necessary for distribution not only on digital stores, but also on radio and television. They are data pages related to the project. Whenever you needed to read this data and understand which plugins were used, the structure of the tracks and so on, until now you had to open the project, wait for all the plugins to be loaded and hope not to do unintended actions that damage the project itself. From now on, things for you will change radically. Here is the game changer. Just click on this button, I show you what happens. Later, you will see how to create this button. Two files are generated, a CSV that we will see later and an HTML one. The HTML one can be opened with any browser. From top to bottom, there are drop-down menus grouped into five main blocks. Above, you have the general project data with uh, project file name, song title and author, which are those set in Alt and Enter together with the sample rate, the version of Reaper used, the sample rate, the total length of the project, in the Total Tracks column, there is the total number of tracks used in the project, how many items are used, numbers of markers and regions, the project notes, which are the ones you write in Alt and Enter. If there are markers and regions, there are the two relative tables. I say it again, they are created only if there are markers or regions. Marker or region name, the color that you eventually assigned to the region, the type, the number that is assigned by Reaper to the marker or region, the index, the position where the marker is placed or where the region begins, the position of its end and the duration of each region. The block below reports all types of metadata contained in the project. Clicking on the large arrow, the block expands which is made up by collapsible sections. By clicking the arrow on the side, the menus expand. Clicking again, they collapse. Here you see the ID3 tags. BWF, AXML, CART, IFF, Q, Info, IXML, FLAGPIC, XMP, APE, VORBIS. These are all the metadata fields that you enter in the rendering window when you press the metadata button. Warning, in the various fields, if you use wildcards, they are represented as they are. It's not a bug. It is wanted by the Reaper programmers. Here is a message from Schwa indicating it. It is possible that this can be done in the future as they implement the coding in the API used for this purpose. This block contains all the rendered audios, the four all the versions of the mix or master that you have exported from the render window. By clicking on the arrow, the section expands and it's made up of three columns. 
In file path, there is the entire path with all the folders which lead to the audio file. The rendering directory is the one you declare in preferences. The tutorial above and in the description illustrates the details. The central column shows the name of the file you have set in the rendering window. The right column has a player that allows you to listen to the file. Hey baby, what's up? Hey, get it Here below there are six distinct sections. The first is dedicated to the master channel. Opening it by clicking on the big arrow, there are two main columns. One dedicated to the track settings, the other for VSTs. Of the track, there are the statuses of mute, solo, if the effects chain is enabled or not. If the master channel is visible or not on the track panel as well as whether it is visible or not in the mixer. The effects section shows the name of the effects if it is enabled or in bypass, if the effects is online or offline and which effects file is and where it is. Below the notes field of the master channel which you can use to write useful notes related to the export for example. In this section, you can find a list of all the tracks shown in their hierarchy. For example, here you see a group of tracks that is under a folder. For each track you have an indication of the solo, the mute, how many items make up the track, whether or not it's visible on the track panel, the same for the mixer, whether the track has effects and whether the chain of effects on a track is enabled or not. The Effected Tracks section shows only the tracks that have effects, not their hierarchy, as it makes no sense here. It is divided into three categories, Track Data, Status and Effect or Instrument Data. The first column indicates a track identifier. If the track has multiple effects, one row is used for each effect as it shows the related data. It is also indicated whether it is an audio track or a folder, as in Reaper folder that also accepts effects. The track notes, where for example you can write the chord sequence as I did, or other notes related to the track itself. Whether the effects chain is enabled or not. The status group reports the number of items up on the track and whether a track is a solo or mute. Below, in the effects group, the name of the effects, if it is enabled or in bypass, if it is offline or online, and the name of the plugin file, including its physical address on the disk. The noted tracks section shows only the tracks without effects and containing only notes. Here you have two blocks, tracks and status. The track section shows its index, name, type of track and notes. In the status section, the number of items making up the track and whether it is solo or mute. As with the tracks, each item is also listed. There are three main blocks, the general data, status and source, referring to the audio file of each item. In the general data, see which track the item belongs to the effects it contains, VST of each type, the position in which the item begins, its length, and any notes you write inside the item. I show you which field in the project. The status column shows you if the item is muted and if it is locked, that is not editable. Lock it by clicking on the padlock. In source, you have all the data relating to the audio file that makes up the item, the for, the file name and the folder type, the sample rate if available, and the bit depth if available. Similar to the previous section, here there are only items without effects, but with notes. It differs from the previous section in not having the effects field, indeed, and in collecting only the items with the notes field not empty. 
Very quickly, we can now see the CSV file, comma separated values, open it with Excel and work on it as you work on any spreadsheet. It reports all the same data available in the HTML file. Here I show you the creation of a filter, for example, with which to filter the metadata that are useful to you. But now the point is how to have the magic button press at which from that moment on you can open the project without opening it. Install my Repack library. For those who have not yet done so, the video illustrating how to do it is above in the description. After that, Extensions, Repack, Browse Packages, and in the filter field, write my name. The script is a, a utility and it's called Export Project Data. At the moment of this video, it is at version 2.8 but is constantly updated in order to implement further features when necessary. You select it, right-click, install, apply and click OK both at the installation successful window and to close the browser. Important, always update Reaper to the last current version, Repack and SWS included. There is no valid reason in the world not to do it. I don't answer it and I do not give any assistance for issues occurring on old versions. At this point, Actions, Show Action List. Write my name in the filter field and find Export Data. You select it and you click on Run, exporting everything. You should already know it, but that's where you needed to assign it to a button like I did here, and I'd use this. If you want to understand how to assign a button, look at the flash tutorial that I linked above in the description. Click when you have finished the session and also at the last opening. This allows you to save the project data. Indeed, as you can see, the names of the files are having timestamps, so they are not overridden. In case of error, you can always open these files to see how far you have arrived without being forced to open the backup files, which are generated by appropriately setting the preferences as I show in the video above and the description. Therefore, it is appropriate to say that you open the project without opening it. Consider becoming a Patreon or at least pay me a beer. For one or other, the links below in the description. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching.